Yeah. Anyways, um, uh, let's see. Can we look at the perks on the wiki instead? DVD wiki. They should like when a new chapter releases, guys. They should have front and center the new killer and new survivors, like right here, like in a showcase, just like right here, like how Shrine of Secrets is here. They should have Bam, the new killer, during during the the introductory phase. New killer, new survivors, right here. I mean, just immediately just made it better. Obviously, you can scroll down here and find them, right? And by the way, they 100% BH for 100% pays someone to do the wiki. Either this is internally done by them or something, but this is not a fan wiki. This is fandom, but this is 100% done by their company. They could literally just move it to their website. This is totally not done by fans. Uh, so let's take a look at perks. Change the walls too. They change the wiki too. It's definitely they keep making them better. It's good stuff. Good stuff, guys. Wiki guy does a really good job, regardless of what the coders do. Anyways, the new killer is the knight. K thirty char select portrait png. Huh? The knight is a strategic killer able to send faithful guards to hunt survivors and damage ob objects on the battlefield. His personal Perks, nowhere to hide, hex face of darkness, and hubris allow him to reveal survivors, generate sur curse survivors, and scream out in fear, and the survivors on the next be exposed. Difficulty moderate, I would say this is a hard killer, mainly because you can't just chase people around, he's not right. This is definitely what I consider a hard or maybe even an expert killer. Yeah, based on what I've seen so far. He's not nursed in terms of mechanical skill, but he's also not wraith in terms of how you deal like you have to think with him like uh bird lady or uh nemesis but not completely with nemesis okay so his perks nowhere to hide for me a damage generator action on a generator triggers nowhere to hide the auras of all survivors within 24 meters of your position are revealed to you for five seconds this is kind of like the locker perk only the locker perk sees across the entire map and has a 30 second cooldown this is 24 meters around your position this is not super amazing. This will help you find people that might be skulking around if you want to start a chase. But if you're looking for cross-map awareness, it's not going to help you out that much. So uh, I don't really think this is a replacement for lockers. I think lockers is actually still just a better uh, a better aura reading perk than this is. Hex Face of Darkness. Uh, once you injure a survivor by any means, if there is a dull totem remaining on the map, Hex Face of Darkness activates and lights it, cursing that survivor. All their survivors see the aura of the cursed survivor for 8 seconds. All their survivors will scream intermittently if they are outside the killer's terror radius, revealing their auras for 2 seconds. Uh, Hex Face of Darkness deactivates when the cursed survivor either enters the dying state or becomes healthy, extinguishing its totem. Hex Face of Darkness is disabled for the remainder trial if survivors manage to cleanse the Hex totem. So if they find it before you... Uh, before they either become healed or... Uh, now the totem goes away because they become healthy or go into the dying state. They have to find it before that happens. But it's going to lead to scenarios where people aren't going to get healed in order to try and figure out where the totem is and basically get rid of it. It has like a built-in version of um, Undying into the totem itself, which makes it much more difficult to... You could apply this to a lot of different totems, by the way. It makes it much more difficult to uh, get rid of without cleansing all the totems. It's kind of hilarious because this is a way of dealing with the fact that survivors don't cleanse totems, and they kind of need to cleanse totems, but not really. Dream intermittently. I wonder what the... I wonder what the uh, uh, time period is on inter intermittent screaming.
No, there's no time period on intermittent screaming, so you don't really know. Okay. I hate black and white text, by the way. White on black text, excuse me. It makes it very difficult on your eyes. Uh, people say this is easier on your eyes. It's totally not easier on my eyes. Maybe it's easier on your eyes if your uh, your brightness is jacked or something. I disagree. This actually makes it more... It's like the fucking words burn into your eyeballs. I don't understand this. I don't understand... I think it's the perception that it's easier on your eyes. I don't think this is. I don't think uh, dark mode like this is actually easier on your eyes. Because if the screen's brighter, your pupils dilate, right? They zone down. And you might say, oh, that's harder, but it's not. Because instead you have super bright text going into your wider pupils now, right? It's like it turns the text into fucking laser beams. Instead of it being like a, a, a brighter light in your face, it focuses it into the text itself. And then that makes it more obnoxious, in my opinion. As you can see here, even though the text is white, it's dull. Right? It's not just pure white, it's like a, uh, like a reduced brightness white, because they have to do that. And then this isn't down here. But once again, even the dark here isn't just pure black. Where on the website, I think, no, that's actually, it's like a gray. Uh, but anyways, cause the survivors intermittently scream. That could be interesting if you're camping and a, a screams, by the way, interrupt unhooking. So if they scream at an inopportune time, maybe it'll allow you to get unhooked. I don't think this is actually going to be run that much. Uh, I feel as though... I mean, it has some interesting uh, mechanics as far as the totem goes itself, but you could actually just not make it a totem, and I don't think people would run it. Uh, it allows you to figure out where survivors are, but you can, instead you could just run this, this right here, or the locker perk is just better than this, in, hands down. And it's not a hex, so why would you run this shit, right? Uh, because just because people are screaming doesn't mean you need to find them, right? You could know where everyone is at all times, it doesn't mean you need to know where they are because you're in the middle of a chase, right? Information doesn't help you if you already have a chase and you don't need to, like, look for someone, so. Uh, yeah. Not sure, guys. I don't think this is all that useful. Uh, this Turks, this perk's probably not going to run. Get run. Hubris. Whenever you're stunned by a survivor, that survivor suffers an exposed status effect for 20 seconds. Hubris has a 20 second cooldown, so that means you can't just have multiple people exposed. I guess uh, only the same person can be exposed. This is. This seems like it might just be interesting, or it might be something LP, but it's not. When you get stunned by a pallet, you usually have to break that pallet, or you're basically fucked. Uh, and this is just, all this means is people are just going to pre-drop pallets. So much like that perk where if someone vaults a pallet, it breaks the pallet. Uh, what's going to happen is people are just going to pre-drop pallets. Just like when you run the, the, uh, pallet break build on Legion, all they do is just pre-drop pallets. That's what they do the entire game. So, when people know you have this perk, all it's, you're, maybe it's going to happen once, especially at high MMR. It's going to happen once, and then you're not going to get any value out of it, because all they're going to do is pre-drop. Because there is no downside to pre-dropping. You can time it. You can time that safe period, guys, when you're going around a loop to either drop the pallet when you're still safe and you think you have one more loop, or you can drop, you know, you can wait and go around one more loop and possibly get a drop slash stun. All this means is someone's going to pre-drop a pallet. There is no downside for survivors for pre-dropping pallets for the most part, which is why a lot of survivors just pre-drop pallets, right? Yeah, because there's no effective way for killer to deal with pre-drop pallets, like enduring spirit fury all rely on getting stunned, right? Brutal strength is the only answer to that. When we ran most one killers, it basically is what, what it turns into, is you just have to break a lot of fucking pallets, and that's just the way the fucking game is, and that's just the end. There's no effective way for killer to deal with just a shitload of pallets, unless he's playing a killer that uh, breaks pallets a little bit faster than other killers, like Nemesis's whip or Demogorgon's lunge attack, right? Yeah. Uh, so this, this ability, and killers that can get around pallets, like let's say Spirit... Uh, and to a lesser extent, uh, no, Nurse, and to a lesser extent, Spirit, excuse me, even though they can go around pallets, 
Uh, you generally don't stun nurse or spirit anyways, right? For the most part, you might stun spirit, but nurse you don't go for stuns on for the most part. So, another perk that's basically worthless. So all these perks in general are pretty worthless. I don't think anyone's going to run them. Uh, this is a good informational perk, but once again, you can just run the locker perk if you're really hard up for information. It might be nice if you can see a survivor that's camping by a gen or something and get a free hit. Uh, but for the most part, just because you know where survivors are does not mean you're going to be able to catch them or do damage to them. It's like playing uh, uh, playing Plague and, and realizing that even though people are in a zero health state, like you can down them instantly, right? They're in a single health state. Regardless of the fact that people are in a single health state doesn't mean you're going to be able to catch them. So uh, regardless of that, not really all that useful in terms of perks. I think the most useful perks here are probably going to be like Hubris isn't really going to work for anyone. They, they're just going to pre-drop pallets. They're never going to get stunned. That's just the way that it's going to be. Uh, it might work with Solar Survivors. Actually, no. A blind effect is a stun, right? It'll work with... Um, there are a couple stuns in the game, like Head On. Or uh, where you aren't going to run into the scenario. But basically, the majority of your stuns come from pallets, right? Head On. Or... Um, uh, last Mine, right? So, in general, not going to be all that useful. It's not really... Even Blast Mine, even if, if you get Blast Mine, that's five seconds where you can't do shit. So, it, it was, it's longer than DS. At that point, it doesn't matter, right? Unless you have Blast Mine, and then there's nowhere to hide, and you see a survivor just sitting there, but then they know they're exposed. Actually, no, it's not even that. It's the survivor that stuns you, so I assume Blast Mine's going to transfer to whoever planted the Blast Mine, so maybe it'll be the guy that's there. Uh, however... Probably not. So, these three perks, basically worthless, guys. I don't expect them to be run at all. Uh, if they do, they might be... No, they just aren't going to get run. This is an inferior, the locker, locker reveal perk. This is an inferior locker reveal perk. This one, in general, they can scream all they want and doesn't give you exact information, so it's not that useful for killers that need to be precise, like Huntress or Nurse, right? Um, yeah. If you want to blink on it, someone with Nurse, you're not going to run that, where you could run the Locker perk. All these are worthless, not very good. Uh, the Knight himself has some interesting abilities. Uh, Guardian. Imposing Claymore, weapon. Primary weapon of the Knight, a massive weapon capable of cleaving a foe in half in the right hands. Yeah, it's just a normal... It's just basically, you have a pipe and that's it. It's, it's basically... You know, shape, right? You, you you have a tool, and that's it. It doesn't matter what you put in your hand. It's just it's imposing flame or okay. It's flavor text. That doesn't mean anything. It doesn't change. It's just another most one. Uh, Guardia Compania. The knight can summon guards, patrol nearby areas, to hunt survivors, or execute tasks for him. Yeah, so you can get them to kick gens. You can get them to break walls and stuff, which is actually pretty useful if you need to multitask, right? But in terms of zombies, they aren't actually as good as zombies in in terms of putting pressure on areas of the map. That being said, if their, their AI is not broken, they might just be straight up better than zombies because zombies will just turn off. They will just stop working. And that's uh, whether or not it's... Uh, whether or not BHVR wanted him to do that, like he's, his kit's balanced around his zombies being broken, remains to be seen, right? And that's one of the, uh, the unfortunate uh, eventualities of... Oh my god, am I in the wrong category, guys? Look at this. I don't think I ever updated my topic. Oh my god. Uh, there you go. People are gonna probably come in here and you're not dressed like a knight. Yeah, no shit. Okay. What are you playing? Uh Overwatch later. After we're done with this. Um, the knight can summon guards to patrol nearby areas to hunt for survivors to execute tasks for him. Tap the power button to activate guard summon mode. Ending this mode will summon one of three guards in a fixed order who will do your bidding, each with his own special ability. Oh, so you can't even pick which guard you summon. Carnifex breaks or damages objects faster. The assassin moves faster during a hunt. The jailer patrols for longer and is better at detecting survivors. 
Survivors are invisible to the night while he's in guard summon mode, and that's what your basically anti loop is like, uh, penis face or dredge, as he's more commonly known. While in guard summon mode, freely move around and increase movement speed to trace a patrol path and press power button or again or drain the power gauge to end the guard summon mode. So you have to actually go out of your way. Good evening, Ooze. You have to go out of your way to start a patrol and so it takes time out of your schedule. I know it sounds weird, but time management's a huge deal for killers, isn't it? Uh, so you have to go out of your way to actually make a patrol path for a killer or for a... Uh, 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 guard and then they'll do it and however long they'll do it depends on which guard you summon what they do depends on the guard you summon and that's very unfortunate because uh, It takes a lot of time, right? You can't just tell them to go to an area and they'll patrol an area or you have like a uh, RTS mode where you can click different spots for them to patrol to like waypoints Yeah Uh, the patrol always starts from where the guard are, summon mode ends. The guard reaches the other end of the patrol path. He will turn back and continue his patrol in the other direction. This behavior repeats for as long as the guard is summoned. Guard order. While well, the guard is summoned mode, aim at generating in progress a down pallet or breakable wall and press the attack button in order to summon the guard to complete the break or damage action on selected object. So that's going to turn out for the most part you're probably not going to specialize which... Uh, which guard you're using like it's just gonna be like oh I'm gonna use this because I'm on like round three of the summon right what's gonna happen is you're just gonna have an opportunity where you have to do something you're gonna have to use whatever guards available to you whether or not they align with whatever you pick right it's just gonna be the way that it is unless you can pick and choose which guard you use when uh, it's just gonna come down to RNG for the most part because you aren't gonna be have time to go out of your way to do stuff that you need to do because you're a killer and killers don't have time Guard order will aim in a guard mode. Guard summon mode, aim in a nearby generator in progress, down pallet or breakable wall, and press the attack button in order to summon the guard to complete the break or damage action and on the selected object. Yeah, you could potentially use uh, the patrol mode in order to patrol parts of a loop and then get like a loop set up. That takes way too much time and they can just run away, by the way. Hey, big. You know how to get stripped? Uh, laptop screws out. You think a local uh, repair shop can fix it easily? Uh, yes. Do I know how to get them out? You can use a screw extractor. I don't know how well they work on small screws, but that's generally used what you use for big screws. You could use a screw extractor. Uh, you could try gluing the tip of a properly sized... By the way, if you guys didn't know, you, j you usually uh, strip screws because you use the wrong size screwdriver. I know that sounds like a good dumb moment, but a lot of people just use the wrong size screwdriver, and it'll strip things out. Uh, and especially with like low quality heads, you won't have good fitment and then it'll cause a strip out and obviously you're you're pretty screwed Yeah Yeah Yep, and you could try gluing the head to it um, Otherwise, I don't know if they make small screw extractors. You probably might want to look at YouTube too. There might be a better way of doing it. Yeah, and normally, like, the shitty thing about that is normally the one of the ways you deal with strip screws is you apply exact perpendicular pressure, right? Like, the screwdriver has to be exactly pointed down, and you apply a lot of pressure, and then you turn it, but make sure that you don't try to skip. So you have to turn it with a lot of pressure, but you can't do this on electronics, right? Because they're too fragile. And you put it down, like, right on the tip, and then you turn it real... Not hard as in, like, rotationally, but push down really hard and turn it, right? But if it's an electronic, you're going to break plastic, glass, all sorts of shit. A laptop is especially fragile. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, another option there is possibly gluing the head head down. Uh, but I'd, I'd visit YouTube and you might find something helpful there. Uh, another option you can do, like in terms of like automotive or some bigger stuff, like if you run into like a stripped up bolt, you can uh, tack a new uh, head or socket to it. Yeah. 
with like a welder, you can't do this for electronics. Once again, you're kind of a bad spot because you have to be fragile with it, right? You have to be delicate with it because it is fragile. So. But even on corners, it's, it's plastic. You're going to break it if you apply a lot of uh, pressure. You can try, but you're probably going to break the corner because it's plastic. Like the amount of pressure I'm talking about isn't something you normally put on a little piece of plastic. It's like on like wood or metal. Uh, you, you could still try by adding, once again, perpendicular pressure straight down on it and then try and, and like slowly working it out with a lot of pressure, but you might just end up breaking the corner of your laptop. So rip it out with pliers. Well, you have to, you can't really do that, right? Because you have to get a got to get on the, the corners of it. And usually those are recessed. You could do that with like a bolt or something, maybe. Pair of lock jaws. Yeah, uh, check out YouTube. You might find something interesting there. Uh, uh, DIY. Sometimes people come with really clever solutions that aren't uh, straightforward. While well, guard is patrolling, you can spot detect survivors within a highlighted area, which is displayed as a white circle around the guard. Displayed as a white circle around the guard. That's probably hard to see compared to zombies raising their arms. If a survivor is detected, the guard will move to their location, leave a start standard on the ground, and start hunting the survivor for a few seconds. The hunted survivor can escape the guard with following means. I'm hooking another survivor. <laughs> so you can't hook camp with them. You can't hook camp with the guards. Grabbing the standard. Surviving until the hunt elapses. Wow, they really fucking suck, guys. <laughs> Holy shit. This is like zombies, only you can counter the zombies with something other than a flashlight, which you might not have. <laughs> so the guards are actually pretty terrible. Yeah. So all you have to do is aggro a guard and then just run away. Do any of them run faster than survivors is actually a good question, because if they don't, they're going to be worthless. If either the guard of the night himself attacks the hunted survivor, the guard will disappear. So if they take a swipe, this is another asterisk, by the way. So if they take a swipe and they miss, they'll disappear. <laughs> so zombies, if they miss, they're just there, right? They don't disappear. Uh, if the guard... Downs the hunted survivor, the knight will receive killer instinct notification down survivor location, which probably isn't going to happen. Uh, let's see, movement speeds. 4.6, which is a normal killer, I believe. As a normal, a normal killer. Artifacts, which is one of the guards. Point four. None of them. What's four point one? What's survivor speeds default? Where I don't like, they use percent sometimes, and then they use MS sometimes, and then you have to know both of them. Because why wouldn't you have two systems for doing the same? Survivors move at 4.0. Uh, what's Myers? What's 105? Ah, not Myers. Shape. Okay. Again, two different, two different systems for the same thing. Uh, 4.2 is 105%. So the Jailer, which is the fastest out of all of these guys, only runs at 4.1. So he runs at 102.5%. He runs 2.5% faster than survivors.
Troll duration 12 seconds, hunt duration 24 seconds. Artifacts hunts longer. They both move at 3.4, which is slower than survivors. Uh, this guy runs faster, but he only hunts for 12 seconds. Once again, you can't pick which one you use. It's RNG on whether or not it's up when you need it. How's this bleeding when attacking survivors so they have to mend? That's the assassin. Once again, you can't pick and choose unless you just happen to use the right one at the right time. Uh, you aren't going to be able or you save it. You aren't going to be able to pick and choose which one you use. It's just RNG. It just round robins through them. When you have an opportunity to use one, you have to use one. It doesn't matter which is up. So. Uh, first, first, uh, 24 seconds is a long time. Once again, that's whether or not they can actually maintain line of sight. Once, whether or not they can actually continually, you know, go after the survivors remains to be seen, right? Um, yeah. So if they can actually stay aggro to this, the survivor for 24 seconds, this is actually pretty good regardless of the fact they only move at 3.4. That's relatively good, right? But if they can't... If they can't, 24 seconds doesn't matter, and you just have to stunt. You have to start the hunt, and because they are, uh, they are uh, um, AI, you're probably going to find ways of cheesing them. So you start the hunt, and then you lose line of sight or aggro if you can lose line of sight or aggro, and then they just basically the hunt's over, right? It doesn't matter if it's 24 seconds if you can lose line of sight because they're so slow. Oh, hunt speed. Okay, I'm looking at this wrong. So when they get aggro to you, they move faster. Okay. This is just their patrolling speed. Okay. I'm looking at this wrong. 4.4 uh, is 110. That's actually meaningful. And 4.1 is, once again, 102%. So these guys are barely moving faster than the survivors. And this is going to come down to whether or not they can, if they can break line of sight and de-aggro them, then it goes back to what actually causes them to uh, disappear, which is if they take a swipe. Uh, or you could just run, you could just do a circle around them and grab the standard. I guess that's basically what this is going to come down to. Is when they take aggro, all you have to do is go around the loop and grab the standard and then they're dead. So even then, there's, there's counterplay to the guards themselves, which is unhooking survivors so you can't camp the hooks with them. You wouldn't want killers to be smart, right? <laughs> you wouldn't want killers to be smart. I was reading Tofu's chat earlier today, guys, and I mentioned that uh, Tofu was experimenting with this, and he was like, oh, hey, I guess you can't camp the hook with these guys. And I said, yeah, you can't play smart with them. And then there's a there's a survivor in the chat that's like, oh, is someone angry that you can't camp hooks with them? <laughs> because <laughs> because you, I was pointing out the fact that you literally can't use them to do something smart. They're forcing you in a way to play as though you have to be a dumbass killer. Because obviously you're a dumbass killer, right? You can't be a smart killer. You can't use your noggin. Because if you do that, then you're a bad killer, right? No, because that's in survivor entitlement. You can't. You can do all sorts of smart things as a survivor. Doing them as killer? No, that's a no-no, right? Don't be a smart killer, guys. Don't do smart things. Why are you guys being smart? Stop being smart. Don't be smart. I want you to be a stupid killer. Yeah. So what's going to happen here is my guess, even though these guys run relatively fast and 24 seconds or 12 seconds would seem as though it's a 12 seconds here would seem as though this is a long time. What's going to happen is you're going to have someone take the, the I think the, the go to here is you're going to have a guy that takes aggro. And he just goes one loop around a building, or around a segment of a loop, and then pulls the, the standard, right? Unless there's a time duration for pulling the standard instead of just touching it, which we'll maybe get to here. Uh, all, it, all it basically results in is someone going around a loop once and pulling the standard, and then they're despawned. These are worse than zombies, even though they have better stats than zombies. These seem as though they're worse than zombies once people just know how to use them. Uh, at low MMR, it could be that they'll be super OP. Zombies got... One of the reasons zombies are as dumb as they are, as dumb as shit as they are, is because I'm pretty sure they got nerfed when BHVR realized that zombies, low MMR survivors couldn't handle zombies. They'd, like, flip out. 
Once again, the game should have different balancing depending on the MMR you're playing at. I've mentioned this for over a year and a half at this point. It's on Twitter. I put it in cement on Twitter just to make sure that I would have, when this came to pass, that I would have, uh, hey, look, you can go back and look at this because, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, yeah. You can actually go to the Twitters to find uh, concrete. Concrete proof. Because I can't change the dates and stuff I post. Maybe with with Elon's Twitter I'll be able to, but for the most part, it's basically in concrete there. It's in stone. Yeah, they're just basically going to take aggro, go around, and then pull it. So my guess, yeah, and a different balancing, a different MMR, guys. My guess is what's going to happen here is all they're going to do is do one loop. They're going to take aggro and purposely take aggro off of the guard at high MMR and basically just burn your cooldown and go around a loop once and then pull it, pull the banner, and that's it. Which, once again, this is like with... Uh, <laughs> With Penis Face, with the dredge on how much counterplay they have to his kid, just like with Sadako, how much counterplay survivors have to play smart, right? And it just basically just nullifies any advantage you actually have as a killer. Whereas killer, you try to play smart, and they make sure that you can't, right? They make sure that you can't. Yeah. Survivors, on the other hand, you have all these different things you can do. You have all these different things, including the one where you just run away. You just run in a straight line away from him, which you'll be able to because they don't run that much faster than you. Uh, except for the assassin, but as a killer, you can't pick which one you use because, once again, you don't want smart killers, right? They use the right the right thing at the right time. Instead, you just give them no option, and then they just get to RNG which, which one they want to pick. Uh, so, yeah, this is what's going to happen is you're going to get one that gets plopped down. Assuming that the killer leaves, which you might, you get one that just gets plopped down. And it's just going to go one, around once, and then the survivor's going to pull the banner. So this leaves it basically to the position where you can use the guards for maybe one of two things. One is which you can use it to, like, tap a gen, but apparently they do not apply your perks. So kind of pointless to go and tap a gen if it's if a survivor's right next to it, because they'll just tap it back. So kind of pointless for that. Uh, you can use it to break a pallet, maybe, as a way of leaving. That's probably one of the best uses for it. Uh, or you can use it as counter loop, where you put the the guard on one side of the uh, one side of the loop, and then you go around the other side of the loop, right? And that's basically it. And that's kind of a shame, but chance that Twitter might go the way of MySpace. Oh, okay, I mean maybe. Kind of doubt it. MySpace really just burned their they burned their castle around themselves. So, yeah. Oh, you have to be, you can only be six meters away to order a guard. <laughs> so the range on orders is very short. Spawn time takes two seconds. So this might not even a good, be a good idea to use it to break like a pallet or something because this takes two time, two seconds to spawn the damn thing in the first place. That's longer than a pallet break. <laughs> Actually, no, that might be just when, after you order it, when it's coming out. They only take a second to break a pallet or vault a window. That's actually really short. That's much shorter than killer. A killer, I believe, for vaulting a window is like 1.5 seconds. Uh, unless you have add-ons. And for breaking a pallet, I believe it's like 2. 2.5. 2.2. So they're actually faster at anti-loop, but because they're so slow, it doesn't really matter. put out a guard every three seconds though but once again this is going to turn one of these things where survivor just goes around the loop once and pulls the banner so it doesn't matter that you could have no cooldown and it probably wouldn't matter at all
If everyone deleted Twitter, could we make Elon poorer? You could bankrupt the United States by not paying taxes if everyone did it at the same time. <laughs> it's not going to happen, so sure. I mean, Disney bought Lucas, and they and these people still watch Star Wars, so. Uh, you move really fast when you're setting up a patrol path. You get 5% haste for 3 seconds when you pick up a banner. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And you get 3 seconds of dur endurance. The fuck is this shit? <laughs> I think I like training wheels. So not only... <laughs> not only do survivors are able to... Uh, pick up the banner. When they do, they get a bonus for picking up the banner and endurance. So they can pick it up in front of you and tank a hit. <laughs> like, holy shit. Like, all the counterplay that they give survivors and they don't give killer any. Holy fuck, guys. Hey, look, guys. The best way of dealing with it is also something that gives you a bonus. The best way of dealing with the, the guards is also what gives you a bonus. <laughs> wow wow okay yeah I don't he's not striking me as very good guys this may he might be I don't if zombies can fuck survivors at low MMR they're gonna fuck them harder than these guys are because there's all sorts of counterplay to these guys they move faster but you literally just at low MMR you just run away in a straight line you're still gonna be fine the only one that's actually able to catch you in any meaningful amount of time is the assassin at 4.4, which is 110%. Yeah. You might fuck low MMR survivors a little mid-range. By the way, prior to other streamers figuring out that certain killers are good at fucking people low MMR, I talked about it last year, guys, with Cenobite when they nerfed him. Talk particularly about that. Yeah. Yeah, with the zombies when they nerf the nemesis of zombies multiple times. Yeah. Always ahead of the curve. 12 months earlier, guys. 12 months prior. Gotta toot my own horn, guys. And so it looks like basically one of the best killers is the assassin, just in general. It looks like all these other guys fucking suck dick, so maybe it turns into one of these things where you. Uh, you can't even spam them out because the patrol duration is 24 seconds. So this guy's just going to be out there just being eating up your uh, your assassin time. Can you just spam them out and just get the... power up it one of the strategies here guys would be to just spam out the jailer and the the carnifax just to get rid of them and then get the assassin up which is basically this is what it's going to come down to is needing this guy let's take a look at his add-ons he might have something in here increase the patrol time you don't want patrol time you want hunt time increases detection range for guards this would be nice Increases the amount of time it takes for a guard to complete their order action, so this is tapping gens and breaking pallets. Obviously, the most useful one is breaking pallets, but it takes a while to spawn the guard in the first place, so I don't even know if you want to do this. That might be useful, depending on how the mechanic works. Guards movement speed while on patrol. Okay. And cycling through summon guards, the assassin appears twice in a row. Useful. Hunt by plus four seconds. Yep. Jailer appears twice in a row. You don't want that. But 
once again, this is any use. Once it determine depends on whether or not you can spam them out. If you can't get rid of the guards while they're out, this is pretty pretty fucking obnoxious. Uh, it just means you can set one on a gen and that's it. And so no one's going to touch the gen. But even then, they're just going to go one around a loop to loop and pull the banner. So I think it's going to come down to using a uh, assassin in a chase. Maybe other guards if they're up, but you're not going to want that if you can avoid it. Increases nice movements, be able to create a path by 25%. I don't think a lot of people are going to create paths simply because they take too much time. Unless you're trying to do some anti loop. Come undetectable. Guard hunts. If survivors escape guard hunts without being hit three times, worthless. Undetectable is pointless when you play against Swifts. Oblivious, another worthless stat, even more worthless than undetectable. Oblivious means they can't see anything. Uh, any aura reading or uh, killer, the killer red stain. Blindness is absolutely worthless. When a survivor is detected by a guard, the survivor suffers a blindness. This just removes aura reading. This removes your red stain, which is very useful. And your, your aura. Hemorrhage doesn't matter. Mangrel doesn't matter. They're just like caking these on because they know they're worthless. These stats. I remember when people were talking about the changes to uh, Slop and Butcher with the hemorrhage changes right now. It's like, oh, it's going to be so OP because you won't be able to 99 amend anymore or uh, uh, <laughs> a health gift for the handful of people that ever do that. Yeah, it doesn't fucking matter. Mangled sucks, which is what Sloppy Butcher has. Actually, I, I think they're they're slightly different. It's not a made in mangled effect. Mangled's like 20% longer to healing, which means it adds an extra 4 seconds to healing. Yeah, that's so great. That's incredible, guys. Uh, this is why Sloppy Butcher is one of the shittiest perks in the game, because when you actually add context to what it's doing, it's not very good. And talk about it in terms of gen time, and gen repair time taking longer is much more useful, because it's more time of the survivors. It's all about time management. And if you're not making survivors spend time, then it's worth the perk. If you're talking about actual economy. After summoning the Jailer, the Knights increase the movement speed by plus 10% for 6 seconds. This could be useful. Uh, if this is additive or multiplicative, will determine whether or not how useful this is. Plus 10% for 6 seconds would be... Uh, if that's plus 10%, that'd be insane. So it's probably uh, multiplicative 10%. Uh, which is much less useful. After summoning the assassin, all survivors are more than 36 meters from the guard's initial position will scream, revealing their location for three seconds. That's not very useful, because you're probably going to summon it when you know where someone is. Another aura re revealing perk, worthless. Aura reading in general in the game has limited uses, and... Once again, you can draw a heat map, and you can give you all the fucking aura reading you want. That doesn't mean you're going to be able to catch a survivor. That doesn't mean you're going to be able to pressure gens or be capable of denying gens from the survivors. They can give you all the aura reading perks in the world, unless you're a killer that uses exact positioning, like a huntress with a hatchet from across the map. And even then, that starts turning into luck. Or a spirit, uh, the aura reading is basically worthless for the killer. Because you can a good killer can devise heat maps in his head, which is why they're giving us all these aura reading perks. Because it's worthless. They don't mean anything. There's no gen regression here. Uh, there's no taking more health states from survivors to finish the game off faster, right? Stuff that you need. Uh, breaking pallets faster, right? Yeah, like a better version of uh, breaking pallets. There was the... Uh, uh, what was it? Superior Anatomy, which allows you to vault the window, fa window faster. That, that definitely helps for downing survivors faster. There's no perks here to help down survivors faster, right? Uh... <laughs> Except for this one, where you spawn in the jailer, you get plus 10% movement speed. A lot of these are just worthless. It, aura reading doesn't mean jack shit. Maybe if you're a shitty killer, you know, aura reading's great and everything. But for majority of killers, majority of players, just... Okay. Alright, I can see where they are across the map. That means jack shit to me at this point, because they can leave that position. You know, you can give aura reading to you all the time. And the only time it's really going to matter is if you're trying to do a mind game and realize they leave the loop. So, Good. Going for a save. That's why I don't. I don't. I don't. 
I haven't run Aura Reading Perks in forever. In literally fucking forever. I think one of the last Aura Reading Perks, it wasn't even an Aura Reading Perk, one of the last perks I used for Intel Gathering was uh, Bl Bloodhound, because it allowed me to see Trails of Survivors longer, and then I could figure out where they're going so they couldn't stealth. Uh, the downside of that was some survivors, for some reason, knew that I had Bloodhound, and they would have a huge, huge leg. That was last year. They'd have a huge leg up on me in terms of distance. I'd be so far behind them, it'd take me forever to catch them, at which point it's basically pointless, right? They can literally just, it's like, ooh, a piece of candy around the map, and basically pointless. So, yeah, and then at one point I was running Crows, because that was useful as well. There's a lot better perks than what they're giving us. They give us a bunch of intel perks. It doesn't fucking matter. It's not going to help you. At the end of the day... As a killer, it's not going to help you. Uh, unless you are one that needs exact intel, and there's better perks for that, such as the locker perk for uh, playing nurse. So, like, they can cake these on, they can name them whatever they want, and it's just filler. It's Essentially, you're just looking at filler perks, just like hemorrhage and mangled here. You're looking at filler stuff that you really shouldn't run, but it's like a trap here for you to run it as a killer and think it's good, right? Uh, most of these are worthless. Uh, plus 10%. Movement speed might be one of the most useful perks here. Uh, stealth perks, worthless, especially playing against the Swift. They don't matter at all. Once again, filler, and then BHVR knows it. It'll help you at low and mid MMR when you're playing against shit survivors, especially oblivious and blindness or undetectable. These will be useful. But when you start getting up there, they aren't going to matter at all. They're, they're either just going to be knowers or they're going to be on voice comms. You can summon the ninja, uh, the assassin twice in a row. That's going to be useful, once again, if you can't spam out your ability. Open speed, a lot of these don't matter. Hunt time for four seconds. I don't think this is going to matter. Once again, it's just going to turn into a survivor going around a pallet and then pulling the banner, and then gets a bonus and endurance on top of it after pulling the banner. So he looks like a killer that, uh, once survivors know how to play against him, he's not going to be very good, much like Penis Face. Penis Face, not very good in general. Uh, he might be relatively, even at low MR, I don't think he's going to be very good, simply because his his uh, guards don't work as well as zombies do as, as far as applying pressure. It's kind of interesting here. When a survivor escapes a hunt by any means other than flag, the survivor is afflicted by hindered and exhausted for 15 seconds. Hindered reduces move speed. Exhausted means they can't use their sprint burst. Uh, I guess this could help you find a survivor, but once again, they can pull the flag, so there's counterplay to it, right? And the primary way for finishing off guards at high MMR is going to be pulling the flag, because you get an endurance effect for it, too. Yeah, survivors have all sorts of fun ways of playing, right? Uh, survivors have all sorts of fun ways of getting out of jail free, right? Uh, without getting fucked. So this is not going to be a useful perk. Because they're going to pull the banner. Once again, that's going to be the primary way of dismissing the guard. Not running for 15 or 20 seconds or whatever. <laughs> not running for 20 seconds is not going to be the way to get out of here. Every fourth guard summoned causes the survivors within eight meters of that guard to suffer exposed for eight seconds. This could be useful. But fourth guard, once again, this turns into RNG, so you can't time when you use it. Good shit. And you can't time which guard you're using it on. Good shit. So any sort of intelligent play by the killer is limited. You wouldn't want smart killers, right? useful. This would be RNG useful. While a survivor is hunted by a guard, spikes block the exit gates for a hunted survivor. When they vault, the vault location is blocked for all survivors <laughs> for the duration of the hunt. While creating a patrol path,
while creating a patrol path, passing through vault locations will block the locations for 15 seconds. So this is basically an end game perk. Uh, oh no, they're getting out. Maybe here's here's a cookie. Uh, so this is, seems relatively useful. Yeah, assuming you get the right guard up, but you can't pick the guard, so... Yeah. Obviously, that'd be more useful for the one guard that has a lot of time in the game, right? That's the, the jailer, right? Carnifex. Actually, I don't know. Carnifex is 12 second patrol, 24 second hunt. And this is 24 second patrol and 12 second hunt. I guess for the Carnifex, right? Because they'll be they'll be in chase. So the Carnifex, if you could pick which guard to use, which you can't, because obviously you can't be a smart killer. Uh, this might be useful for him at the end game when basically all the survivors are running away, teabagging you at the exit gates. You can possibly use this maybe to get a 1K. Not a very good killer, guys, from the looks of it. Uh, uh, it looks like you might be able to use the guard as an anti-loop or sit on a gen. And that looks to be the end case scenario for him is anti-loop or sit on a gen. And Bird Lady does it better. Uh, zombies do what he does better in terms of pressuring the map. Although you can't direct where they go. Uh, you can kind of finagle them with add-ons to maybe make them a tiny bit better. Uh, in general, it looks like the guard sucks. Uh, I don't think he's going to be all that great. He looks like he takes a decent bit of skill to use as far as uh, uh, just finessing his class in general. Just using his class seems like it takes a significant amount of skill, regardless of the fact that uh, he's not even seems doesn't even seem that powerful. Low MR, for the most part, people are just going to run directly away from uh, the guards, and at high MR, they're going to pull the banner. And put, pulling the banner is a much better solution than running straight away from them. So maybe you'll get some downs at like low MMR where people are dumb shits at 4.410% movement speed. You might get some downs at low MMR. At high MMR, what's going to happen is you're just going to pull the banner. They're going to end up with an endurance effect. And what you're going to see is when you try to use these during chases, you're going to see a survivor just like run past the guard, pull the banner, get an endurance effect, and you're going to get a free hit on them. Or they're going to get a free hit with endurance effect. Yeah. So it's like it's like having a killer that buffs survivors. Uh, that's kind of interesting. That's a good take, BHVR. I love having killers that literally are there to help survivors. Um, yeah, I mean it's an interesting take on a killer, at least from a design perspective. He seems pretty interesting. Uh, implementation perspective, not very interesting. Uh, his aesthetics and the new map look relatively cool. The new map is way too orange and red. It looks that way, probably to mask mask. Uh, Scratch marks and help survivors out once again. Gotta love that, right? Gotta give the survivors the upper hand again. Yeah, just fucking out of nowhere. Just, hey, let's make this map, like, red and orange so killers cannot see scratch marks. How great would that be? Fucking weird. It's probably, like, their whole development. Like, how can we fuck killers in this patch and kind of hide it? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, he looks cool from an uh, aesthetic standpoint, just like Sadako does. I don't think he's going to be very good. Maybe I'll stand to be correct here, guys. Initial impression is he's actually not very good. Uh, once survivors realize that pulling the banner is how you deal with the guards, especially once you get this, yeah, assuming they, let's say they w read the wiki, and you see this, yeah. Yeah. This is basically, the you can summarize the killer with this right here. This is the summary of the killer right there. His anti-loop also gives the survivor a bonus if they're smart about it. Meanwhile, meanwhile, his ability to use your, you know, to guard hooks is right here. And by the way, this exists on Nemesis. Unhooking another survivor uh, will despawn the guard. This exists on Nemesis where the, the zombies will oftentimes just break next to hooks. I think them breaking on top of gens has something to do with their AI being broken, like, uh, intentionally broken next to hooks too, where they'll just stop moving and not actually hit. And by the way, there's immunity to survivors. If they get unhooked and the zombie hits them within like two seconds when they're unhooked, uh, they don't take damage, if you guys are curious about that. They added that back November a year ago. That's when they broke the zombies even more to stealth nerf them because they were too strong. Yeah. They don't tell you about all this shit, but you notice it happening if it's your main killer, which Nemesis is my main, right? Uh, so, yeah. Uh, this is a killer that basically isn't going to be very good. He's probably going to be like a C-tier killer, uh, like Pig. I mean, Pig might even be better. 
Uh, once people at High MMR, people are going to learn to pull the banner, and then they're going to get a benefit for doing so. Uh, his anti-loop is just inferior to a lot of killers' anti-loop, which is just using a guard, right? And hopefully you'll have the assassin up when you're using the anti-loop, and maybe you can get it down with it, right? Probably not, though, because it's RNG, because you can't pick which guard you use. Because BHVR doesn't want intelligent killers. Very unfortunate, so you could see, like, despite this killer being interestingly engineered, you can see all the the chokehold that they applied to him in order to make it easier for survivors. Like, they intentionally gimped him to make him easier for survivors. And once again, uh, the game should be balanced differently depending on the MMR, and then maybe both sides could have a little bit of a win here, right? Uh, where you can take away some of these abilities or make them less uh, overbearing or overpowered as, like, the low MMR survivors are thinking, like... Little Evermore Survivors will tell you that uh, Plague is an S-tier killer, for instance, when she's not. Um, and then you play at high MMR with Plague and you realize that just because they're in a low health state doesn't mean you can catch them. So, because she doesn't have any anti-loop unless you drink, and if you drink, they have time to get away from you, so. Yeah. And that's if you're lucky enough to end up by a fountain when you're in a chase, or next to a chase. Good shit. There's a lot of... We've talked... We went over Plague pretty, pretty heavily and discussed her downsides. Uh, all right, let's see what the survivors got. I bet they got a bunch of nice perks, right? Uh, killer perks here. These are all shit. Let's take a look at the survivor. Oh, boy. Can't wait. Potential energy. You can take 1.5% repair progress and convert it into store it into 1% per repair progress later on. Uh, it's not a positive, it's not a net positive event. So what we're probably going to see is this isn't going to happen because basically you repair slower in order to store tokens, store basically repair energy for later on. So it can turn a maximum of 25% repair progress into 20% that you can transfer to a different uh, generator. Kind of an interesting perk. I don't think anyone's going to run it, unless this is... Because this is only one level here. Uh, it doesn't show the different tiers. If you lose... If you lose a health state, you lose all the tokens. So I guess there's some counterplay. You're not going to know that the survivor has it as a killer. They don't even need to add that. I don't think anyone's going to run this unless it turns into a positive ratio uh, with like the, the tier level, which isn't displayed here. Unless it turns into a positive ratio, no one's going to run this. Maybe it is a positive ratio in the high, higher level of the perk, but I kind of doubt it. It might be, it might be, because this is usually, the the orange is usually the value that changes, right? Maybe. Uh, let's take a look. Nope. Yep, so that's it doesn't improve based on the level. No one's going to run it. It's a net negative effect for efficiency. Obviously, survivors aren't going to run that because it doesn't make it go faster, despite the fact you could possibly use it to uh, on, a, on a gen that's in a 3-gen. It's a way of breaking a 3-gen, right? Yeah. It's like getting a brand new part that you can transfer. So survivors are super... It, if survivors weren't so spoiled, this could be a perk that you could use for a clutch moment, but it's not. So they aren't going to run that. Succeeding a great skill check while repairing a generator reveals the killer's aura for six seconds. No one's going to run that. That's pointless intel perk. Uh, when you can just run something like Kindred. <laughs> you could just run Kindred or uh, Dark Sense. I think it's called Dark Sense where you repair a gen you see the killer's aura. It doesn't matter. Worthless perk. 
increases the repair speed of any other survivor by 8% while you are being chased within 24 meters of generator currently being repaired. Worthless perk. Uh, I don't know, maybe useful, but it, no, it's gonna. It's not as good as something like um, prove yourself, prove thyself. So, uh, potentially it could be used to speed up gens. Kind of doubt it. This is a very, very niche perk. This one could be used as another niche perk, but it could also be clutch if you're in a three gen. But survivors aren't smart enough to think like that. Instead, they just complain about the negative ratio, so no one's gonna run it. Um. Yeah, none of these are interesting, like overpowered or out of the ordinary here. So, and doubt it. So, a summary here, guys, of the killer is killer is very easy to play around. Uh, he's probably not going to be very good. His units, his his minions are seem to be worse than a the zombie AI, but they might be better. It depends uh, if the zombie AI is broken. The units themselves seem like they're very. There's a lot of counterplay. The killer himself is gimped, so you can't do certain things that you need to, to win, such as camp hooks with a guard, or be capable of spawning the right guard at the right moment. Even putting aside hook camping, spawning the right guard when you need to, you can't do that. Um, his anti-loop is based around the fact that, you know, survivors aren't smart enough to pull the banner. Yeah. Get a free endurance effect. This basically says it all right here. Is haste strength, haste duration, endurance duration on pickup. So if you're in chase and the killer's close to you, you can use it to get a free hit on yourself with an endurance effect. Yep. Good. Okay. Um, let's take a look at the comments section here. Oh, uh, there's also other patch notes. Flashlights, yep, flashlights got buffed now. Uh, the flashlight makes it much easier to hit flashlights, so you're going to see a lot more flashlights now. Because obviously, it's not overbearing enough getting survivors that know how to use a flashlight and just come out of nowhere. You have to make sure everyone's capable of doing it. You have to be more inclusive of all the low MMR players, right? <laughs> Holy shit. Yep. Good. But now you're immune to Walker Bryant, so you don't have to deal with bully squads, even though those were incredibly rare. Now you don't have to deal with them anymore. I guess the trade-off for just everyone being able to hit flashlights is you don't have to deal with Walker bully squads for the tiny bit of matches that you saw them in. Bot support, okay. Uh, updated basement, water stairs to address body blocking issues. Yep. That's to prevent the killer from body blocking survivors getting downstairs. Wow. Yeah, making things easier for uh, survivors. And once again, you wouldn't want killers being smart and body blocking appropriately. I've been doing this for over a year, by the way. Keeping people from going down to the basement when they're trying to get down there in the nick of time. Yep. Oh, uh, I don't know if the updated basement's for all maps. It might be. There's one here for uh, RPD, killer blocking the basement, which is probably with boxes. They like putting stuff right next to the entrance to the basement. You can sometimes use it like on the uh, Auto Haven, I think it is. It's on, it's on one of the maps. There's like a rack next to a, a banister, and you could body block it because, yeah, BHVR things, right? And they immediately fix that stuff. I'm happy to have a summoner minion based killer, though initial reactions have me worried about the AI and the general effectiveness, yep. But also on top of that, there is already Nemesis. If the AI is anything like the zombies Nemesis has, I'll be annoyed, hopefully the fact that they've been working on the AI apparently to be able to do bot matches and such, I'm holding hope. From what I've seen, it's far better than Nemesis AI, AI, mostly because they exclusively chase rather than patrol with AI. You decide the patrol path and then chase. They broke the AI. I think what a lot of people are thinking here and they don't understand is that the AI for Nemesis is intentionally broken.
Can't wait for Nurse to nerf Hubris, is not. How many people try to stun Nurse? <laughs> Nobody drops pallets on Nurse anyways, no shit. She could intentionally get stunned with a perk to make a lose-lose situation. Drop the pal on the stun, you're fucked. Oh, ho, ho, yeah, because there's a lot of nurses that work that way. Yeah, why would you make things so much more difficult for you just to work around a perk and use it? Fuck off. I could come up with this fictitious scenario in my mind in which something happens. And then therefore it's going to happen, right? I know it can be used and abused in a certain very specific scenario which makes everything more difficult. Most everyone is uh, least... Least resistance, right? They go down the, the easiest path, and they aren't going to make a, a weird-ass fucking scenario just to prove you right on the Reddit. Yeah, the other pigmains fucking stoked to get night perks on their piggies. Pretty much all those would work well in her. No, they wouldn't. Once again, just because someone's exposed doesn't mean that you are going to be able to catch them. Furthermore, people are, if they know that you have the perk, they're just going to pre drop pallets. New map looks like shit. Would honestly look better snowy. Yep. One of the knight's summons needs to be built in a way that counters holding W when the killer starts to power. You mean like what people do when you use your power as dredge? Yep. Yep. I love, like, the the passive-aggressive subterfuge to get certain killers nerfed, where they talk about perks being nerfed because of nurse to get nurse nerfed. Yeah. God, fucking guys, like, the, the backhanded subterfuge to try and get... It's like politics. It's literally like Game of Thrones in here. If you, if you want to look anywhere further, guys, than Game of Thrones, just look at the Dead by Daylight community as far as the survivors trying to get their way and trying to fuck killers in any way, shape, and form. Fogwise is awful at low MRQ and just absolutely busted for Swift. I mean, seeing the killer's aura is OP when you know you're in chase with it. What? Well, you can. There's all sorts of things that tell you where the killer is. In relation to your position in the game, you don't need to see his exact aura. It's even, like, I talk about a heat map on Killer. It's even more ridiculous as Survivor, because you can hear the chase music, you can hear it building up, and then you can see his red stain coming for you. Yeah, yeah, you don't need to be, you don't need a perk that sees exactly where the Killer is all the time. And if you do, like, Kindred helps Survivors organize because they can see each other. And then work around the Killer better. Yeah, no. It's not, it doesn't matter. Nowhere to hide, nope. You can just use a locker or perk. Use uh, potential energy to counter a 3 gen, yep. Yeah, 
add in the double hook camping, and I think pretty much convinced me BH Fair does want survivors ever surviving, which would be fine, except how they pretend they do. Dude, survivors that have never touched a killer ever are fucking gross, guys, just in terms of their entitlement and uh, spoiled, entitled, and ignorance, just like pure ignorance. Double hook camping. I run Fearmonger fairly often. What the fuck? What is double hook camping? I don't ever run Fearmonger. It feels like a trash park that doesn't ever do anything. Yep. Because they get off the gens early and then they get their exhaust up. Uh, Fearmonger is one that makes it so you're exhausted when you're on gens, but you get off the gen for five seconds, I think it is, and then you're fine. Perk, nowhere to hide. Sounds absurdly powerful. Have they seen the one that reveals the kill the survivor's position when you open a locker? Within a certain distance, almost always will be within a certain distance of lockers. Like a killer that encourages camping, you look at the... You look at the uh, wiki and you realize you can't. How would Spirit Fury work against pre-dropping pallets? Because you can just break three pre-drop pallets and have the insta break up when you get stunned. They can't possibly pre-drop every pallet. They 100% can fucking pre-drop every fucking pallet. There's another guy that hasn't played at high MMR or even medium MMR. Like mid MMR is where you just get stuff like that where you like the killer's not very good and they have they have a lot of time to get to new loops and just drop a pallet, especially with windows of opportunity. Which is a very good perk if you're not very good at finding loops. I know his power can kick a gen. Does it apply a gen kick perks? Nope. Yep. Nope. You can't use your knights to do your bidding. <gasps> Through you. Order minions to do stuff for you, breaking gens, pallet doors that saved you so much time. It's pretty strong. Uh, no. It takes you time to make the orders, and you have to be within a certain distance. Best add on seems to be one that increases patrol time and increases the speed when you draw a path and length. No, because you're not going to you're not going to spend time making patrol paths because it takes time. You can't spend time as a killer. In terms of chase value, the power is very counterable by holding W and pre-dropping pellets. Yes, just like with penis face. Nice Mori is actually pretty cool. It does a uh, gladiator execute. Where you stab down through the collarbone and you uh, hit the heart. Actually, I don't even think they do that. They went, they go straight down, but you're supposed to stab down and hit the person's heart. 
not through the collarbone, but through the, the area you have up here. Someone watched, uh, not Gladiator, uh, Spartacus. Blood and Sand, I believe it is. Killer is not an RTS game. No, because you have to spend time doing stuff that you can't spend doing as a killer because you still have to chase survivors. So you can't. If you could draw on the map easily, like bring up an RTS map and draw it really fast, you would. But you can't, so it's not going to happen. Nice power sounds quite good. It's not. The like devs are now seem to be experimenting with killers that have complex powers. It's starting to feel a bit stale with all the recent killers having similar powers. Yes, but it doesn't matter because there are safeguards in place so survivors don't get fucked by killers that are too smart for them. Yeah, be it fair. At the end of the day, it basically just comes down to anti -lip. That's why original killers more. Yeah, like Sadako. Sadako's not original, by the way. Like Sadako, only you realize that she just sucks because they don't have passive gain for uh, for condemn sticks. So, end of the day, she just gets fucked, guys. Her people just get fucked by her. Excuse me, she gets fucked by survivors. The power makes it sound like a 4v4. You can only have one guard at a time. Yep. Hubris is going to be so good with Enduring Spirit Fury, it's actually insane synergy, except for the fact that you're not going to run it because people are just going to pre-drop. <laughs> yeah, best case scenario for that is literally Legion with his pallet break, and it's still not good enough. So good luck with that. Reacting to hubris and not realizing the friend called pre drop. This is like people thinking that one perk that if a survivor drops a pallet and then vaults it, it breaks is an OP perk. Oh. Potential energy works to prove thyself. Mm, yep. Yep, he's a medium uh, difficulty killer, too. The knight looks so complex, maybe the most complex killer to date. Uh, he takes more strategic thinking, but not really, like, not as tough a mechanical skill as, for say, uh, nurse. There's different kinds of skills, guys. Complex involves multiple different skill sets, not just one, right? Nemesis is actually a pretty complex killer if you look at him more than just his power, which is just his whip. How I've been playing him for the last year and a half. Potential energy is a dog shit perk. No, use it for breaking three gens. No. You risk press star stuck nursing coming. Or 
you could just use the one that allows you to see where people are when you pick up the survivor. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay, where have you been? He has 18 points too. So 18 people agreed with that because they don't know better. Uh, not Nemesis. Uh, Whiskers. Whiskers came out with a perk that allows you to see where survivors are when you pick up a survivor. So you can use it with Starstruck. Yeah, it's kind of weird how many people are like freaking out about hubris and then not putting into context that you can pre-drop pallets. <laughs> oh, oh, geez, guys. Pre-dropping pallets will make this perk mostly useless. Yeah, he has seven points compared to thirty-nine. Not just pallet stuns though. Head and flashlights are blind; it doesn't count. Flashbangs are blind; does not count. what Legion should have been. No. No one talks about what ass potential energy is and the not so elusive survivor that doesn't know what a 3-gen is. One. They probably just quit the game. They'd probably just DC and go next and never actually figure out how to deal with the 3-gen. Good. They're just gonna camp with this guy, aren't they? Three points. It's not how his power works. Someone unhooks, they despawn. So Okay. Uh alrighty guys, let's uh let's upload this to the tubes and get it up there. Yeah, new new killer looks really cool. Uh not very effective. Much in the same way that uh Much in the same way that um, Enos' face looked kind of cool, but then turned into a shitter. He's the same way. There's too many safeguards in place for people just to deal with uh, the knight at high MMR. They're going to pull his banner, and at low MMR, um, they're just going to run away in a straight line, and the killer's probably just going to run, too. So, nothing he does is really super amazing, as it turns out. 